A fine violin is always carved to shape. By carving the wood out naturally, it leaves the wood that it was perfectly relaxed while hanging from the ceiling totally relaxed in the instrument itself. Within about 45 minutes, the entire back is roughed out on the inside with the gouge. Maple is a hard, tough wood when it's grown properly for a fine violin. This is, of course, the wood that gives the violin its power, its strength, that ability to boom in a concert hall. My cradle is very similar to Stradivari's. Maybe a little fancier than his. I like it because I can hold the back down with these four pads. By the time you finish carving a cello back out, you've worked up quite a sweat. But as you can see, with just a little patience, a little strength, the back gets hollowed out fairly quickly. Now that I'm used to the wood and I've got a good feel for it, I can go in for the deeper, longer gouges. And once I'm done with the gouge, then I start in with the tooth blade plane. And that's when I take these small pads off and I can measure how thick it is with what's called a drop gauge or a dial indicator on a base. And Stradivari had his calipers that would measure thicknesses. I have mine. With each stroke, I get to know this piece of wood, how hard it is, how resilient it is, if it's flexible. If a piece of wood is soft, I will leave it thicker. I will also carve the arching a little higher. And sometimes, especially on a one-piece back, you'll find a certain area that is a little softer than another. And in order to make it just right, you'll carve it a little different thickness, a little different arching in that area to compensate unless you want that violin to have that little characteristic. I'm now working my way out closer to the edges. At this stage, I have to keep in mind this outer shape of the instrument as I go down further and further. Later on, I'll measure, but if you have to measure too much and too often, it can take you half a lifetime to rough out a violin. And this is where the experience comes in on how quickly you make an instrument. It's nice to think, oh, he spent hundreds of hours creating the instrument. And yet that shows. If, if an instrument makes, if it becomes tedious, it shows in the craftsmanship. It shows in the surfaces. It shows how the gouges and chisels were handled. Maple is tough. And yet the tougher the maple, the sweeter the voice. <laughs> It's one of those things, as I mentioned with Joseph Guineri, it, it seems as though the roughest, most quickly worked instruments he made were definitely among his greatest, if not his very greatest instruments. Don't get me wrong. My father was a nuclear physicist, and my brothers are scientists and mathematicians. I believe I've tried just about everything that science has to offer. And yet what truly determines the soul of a fine violin is how it moves.
what determines this more than anything is that the center of the back of a fine violin is about twice as thick as it is at the edges, with it being just a little bit thicker through the seabout edges. And for a wonderful, all-around, focused instrument, uh, that is the basic pattern. In fact, Joseph Guarneri, while he was graduating the back and before finishing with the tooth blade plane and the scrapers, would glue in a small round conical pin at that focal point and then carve his instruments so that they would, the focal point of the movement would be right on that pin. Well, Stradivari and the approach I've taken is more focused and judging on how it moves while looking at it from the outside. You look at both, but there's just a certain feeling that each person has when looking at an instrument. And the more you look, the more you see where and how it moves and how flexible it is. Or if there's an area that just seems a little stiff, you'll, you then disregard any measurements and carve and scrape until it moves the right way. Yet the right way can be just as unique as each of the customers in Two Trees, Choice of Loves, and Clay Angel. If you start with everything else on the instrument balanced, twice as thick on the center as it is at the edges, and then remove just a little more material right down here in this area, and make it the thickness come up a little more gradual, that will make it a deeper sound. The opposite. If you scrape or remove more material out of here, it becomes more strident, more brilliant and sparkling. Over in this area, it sounds more flute-like. Which brings us to the center. As I mentioned, about twice as thick as the ends for a very focused voice. And yet, there are some wonderful voices to be had if that relationship becomes slightly less. <laughs> 